What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how I find high probability supply and demand setups uh, using break of structure, using trend. Um, so we can go ahead and dive right into it. So right here, I have a small uh, little drawing set up here with on the Boeing chart. So you can see that in this drawing here, price is in the uptrend. So we have an up here, down, up, down, up. Um, clearly uptrend making higher highs and higher lows. Um, I also have some supply and demand zones drawn on here as well. So this would be a supply zone, for example. This would be a demand zone, and this would be another supply zone. So obviously in this case, supply and demand, or sorry, supply is breaking in this area, right? So price comes down, we go back up, we break supply, right? So if you were ended up getting short at the supply zone, you would have gotten stopped out, right? Same thing here, price ends up breaking the supply. So when you go ahead and you put in your short position here, you're gonna get stopped out, okay? Now supply and demand, guys, is not 100%, okay? It never works 100% of the time, but this is a trick that I use to increase that win percentage with my supply and demand setups. And basically what that is, is all you have to do is wait for trend to be aligned with your zone. And what I mean by that is obviously, here we're in an uptrend, and so in an uptrend, you only want to be taking demand setups. And in a downtrend, you only want to be taking supply setups, right? So if price was like this in a downtrend, then we would want to be looking at taking supply setups, right? Because we know that in a downtrend, we're going to make lower lows. And so we know that demand zones are going to fail, right? And so what you want to do is identify trend and assume, okay, was this supply zone here able to take out this demand zone down here? If the answer is no, you don't want to get short at that supply, right? So let me let me break that down again, right? Let's say we're here, right? And we're price comes down, price comes back up, and we're looking to short at this supply zone, right? Since this supply, this price, this move lower was not able to take out this demand zone here, you do not want to be getting short here because bulls are still in control. If demand holds, buyers are going to be in control. If supply holds, sellers are going to be in control. Since demand held here, this supply could easily get break in and we can move higher, right? So I'm going to show you some live examples on different stocks here, and hopefully that can help you out with this method. So let's go ahead and actually look at Boeing itself. If we zoom out, go here. So you can see if I zoom in here, this is the examples that I have. So right here, we have this demand zone, right? Price comes down, or price comes up, we form the supply. We have a sharp move lower, so we supply forms here with this gap here. Now, supply is able to take out this demand here, right? Price goes lower than this demand, okay? So that means the sellers here in this supply zone were stronger than the buyers here because we were able to, get, we were able to break below this demand when this should have held. Knowing that, now we know that this supply zone here is a valid zone and we can look for shorts in this zone because the sellers were able to take out the buyers down here now with that being said you can go ahead and look as price came back all the way up to that supply beautiful reaction ended up getting a lot lower this could have been a very nice trade you could have taken for a very solid risk reward we're getting about you know 227 up to 231 about four points for you know, over 20, 30 points of profit. So very good risk reward. Now you can see here that we have this demand zone here, right? We have this drop, this base, we have this strong move up, nice rally, and price goes all the way up to the supply. Since this demand zone here was not able to take out this supply, you can see supply held right here, right? This demand held this, or sorry, yeah, this demand when price came up, supply held, so the buyers here we're not able to take out the demand, the, the supply up here, right? With that being said, we know that this demand zone can break, right? Sellers are still in control, right? If supply holds, sellers are still in control. So we don't want to be buying at this demand. You can see price eventually wick low it, so we would have gotten stopped out. Again, same situation, right? We keep going on. Supply here, able to take out the demand, right? Just by a little bit. Even if we take it out just with the wick, it still counts, right? So price comes down, we break this demand, sellers are still in control, we come back up, hit supply again, end up going lower. Same thing, 
now we have a drop base drop supply, right? Instead of a rally base drop, now we have a drop small base drop supply zone, right? Works in both cases, right? We are able to take out this demand here as well again, right? So supply is still still in control, right? The sellers are still in control because they are able to take out this demand. So when price comes up, we hit supply. Now you're thinking, okay, I want to get long in this demand zone, right? We have this drop base, nice gap up, little rally here, solid demand zone. Price ends up, we do get a little reaction from it, and then we end up dropping all the way lower, right? And that's because, again, with the overall trend, the sellers are still in control, right? This is in a downtrend, right? So you don't want to be buying demand zones in a downtrend and um, selling supply zones in an uptrend, okay? Let me look at a few other examples to help break this down even further for you. So let's take a look at eBay. Other way, right? Clear uptrend, right? Clear, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and then eventually we go into a downtrend up around here. So let's look at these examples here. So price makes a move up, we drop, we rally, right? Very strong demand zone, very nice rally. We're able to take out this high here, right? We're in an uptrend, remember that. This demand is able to take out this supply. So we know that the buyers are in control. And when the buyers are in control, that's when you can be longing in demand. So price moves up all the way to 74 bucks, end up coming all the way down to this demand, and we bounce and break higher, right? Now you may be thinking, this is a very good supply zone. Look at this, we have a you know rally here, base, and then we have a drop, right? Very solid supply zone. We got a very fast drop, very good gap here, nice supply zone. But we end up ripping right through it, right? And why is that? That's because this supply zone here was not able to take out this demand here. And we're in an uptrend, remember? So we're making higher lows, right? We're in a uptrend, right? Very clear uptrend here. When you're in an uptrend, you don't want to be selling at supply. So, a lot of people may have gone short here, they got stopped out, um, but obviously knowing this rule, knowing that, you know, since this supply was not able to take out this demand, and what I mean take out, I mean get below this demand, that means buyers are still in control. Same thing, right? Now we see another demand zone form, right? From here, we, you know, quick move up, very, very fast move up, nice demand zone right here. You can see that this demand is able to take out this supply. Right, so when demand exceeds supply, now we know that buyers are still in control. And when that happens, we get the drop up down to $69. We could have put our stop at 66, and we get a nice move up to this high at 77. Very solid risk reward, very great trade. Again, same thing, right? You have this supply zone here. Um, you don't want to be shorting at the supply. Now, supply and demand, it still works, right? Not always, but you're still going to see a reaction most of the time, right? See here, we tap it, we consolidate for a little bit, we get a tiny move lower, we end up ripping, right? So if you do want to take scalps from these, you can, but you do have to realize that you are going to have a lower win percentage if you do that, right? Now price comes down, we hold this demand, right? And now finally, this price breaks, this demand zone here breaks, right? And I know what you're thinking, Jordan, you just said, you know, this demand here was able to take out this supply, why didn't this demand zone hold? That's because we're actually in a change in trend, right? Over the long term, this is, happens to be a change in trend. So you can see, ever since then, price has gone downhill, right? As soon as demand was taken out and we saw that supply was in control, price has gone down ever since. So let me show you guys one more example on Zoom, and then we can go from there. So looking at Zoom, just one quick example here. You can see, again, price is an uptrend. We have a nice... Uh, drop, little consolidation zone here, nice fast move higher. Again, this supply zone forms here, small move lower, little gap, uh, big move down, right? Good supply zone forms, but we were not able to take out this demand, right? Supply comes down, demand holds, so you don't want to be getting short at this supply or at this supply either, right? Price ends up breaking it higher and we end up going up a lot more. So obviously, we're in an in and uptrend when the when demand is holding, you do not want to be shorting at supply. You only want to be looking for long. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, again, very quick rundown is if we're in an uptrend, you only want to be buying in demand zones. And if we're in a downtrend, you only want to be shorting at supply zones. So 
This is a tip that I use that really helps me out. It's going to increase your win percentage quite a bit, and um, I'd love to see you guys use it in your trading. And let me know in the comments below um, if you see an increase in your win rate doing this method. So with that being said, guys, please leave a like, subscribe. Let me know um, what other videos you want me to do in the comments, um, and I will see you guys in the next video.